So what's new with you? How you doing? I'm doing wonderful. How are you doing today? Really good, really good. I see you got your lift like a girl shirt on. Looks cool. Yeah, man, I gotta wear it. Come on now. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Okay, we're just going to get rolling into this. Um, it's it's great to great to finally talk to you. You know, we chat a couple of times really briefly on Facebook and stuff like that. I'm a huge fan of everything you're doing, and uh, we preach a lot of the same philosophies. So uh, I was definitely very intrigued to uh, to get in touch with you and talk about some of the things that you got going on. So for anybody that doesn't know who you are that that's connected with me, give a brief introduction. Nia Shanks, right here, everybody. This is Matt Wichlinski. Go ahead and talk about yourself for a second, what you're doing, where you're at. And- all that good stuff. Uh, my name is Nia Shanks. I run NiaShanks.com, and I'm also a co-founder of the group Girls Gone Strong. Mm-hmm. Uh, we actually just launched our website last week, which is absolutely awesome. Mm-hmm. I'm a personal trainer. I'm also a writer, and I've been doing this for going on about 10 years now. And I just write a lot of articles for my websites uh, through Girls Gone Strong and um, just trying to help women achieve their goals through what I call no-nonsense strength training and nutrition information. Awesome. Now, you train girls exclusively, or you have guys too, or? No, actually, at first, when I first started training a long time ago, most of my clients were men. Mm-hmm. Uh, but here, actually, it's been primarily women, especially when I do online consulting. It's usually women that come and work with me. But I have worked with men in the past cool. quite a bit, actually. Excellent. And where are, you, where are you located now? Right now, I'm in western Kentucky for right now, but that'll change soon. For right now. So, okay, you're planning on moving. Cool. All right. So, um, what what other websites have you written for? Or do you write for now? Because you got the girls going strong, and you know your your personal website. And have you done? I think I've seen you on like bodybuilding dot com. What else are you uh are you writing for? Where are you at? Uh, usually I've been doing a few guest posts lately for other people's websites. Yeah, I've been on bodybuilding dot com. I wrote for I want to say it was Muscle and Strength, mm-hmm. uh, Experience Life, their uh, Contributors Corner. Okay. And a few other ones that have to, <laughs> to look. It's listed on my website. But. Right on. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. So what you've been training for a long time. How long have you been training uh, clients or athletes? I've been strength training other people for about 10 years now. And yourself personally? I've been heavily involved, seriously, in strength training for about, since I was about 16. So, you know. About 15, 16, about 12 years. Dating yourself a little bit. Okay, cool. Um, I'm <laughs> what, got, what got you into it? You were a teenager and you, you got into it. Were you playing sports in high school or what got you involved with uh, like strength training, fitness, you know, shit like that? Well, actually, I fell into it pretty naturally because my mom has been in the fitness industry ever since she was 18 years old. And so she was actually the first female personal trainer in our hometown. And so I basically just fell into it really easy with her. Uh, growing up, I was heavily into sports, but as I got a little older, I got out of organized sports. I used to play basketball a lot, uh-huh. but I just got into more individual things. Like it's it's funny to say, but like aggressive rollerblading stuff. Uh-huh. I mean, we had rails and rails and just just uh-huh. weird stuff like that. And then uh, it was more just the individual stuff, martial arts for a period of time, and just like kind of doing stuff on my own. And so naturally, fell into to weightlifting and challenging myself that way. Cool. So it was it was um, it was kind of easy for you because it was already instilled in you for, from you know childhood. You know you played sports and and you realized the importance of it. You know growing up, it was you know from your mother or your family. It was always around you. What about for people that aren't necessarily in that situation? Maybe they didn't play sports. Is is there any like uh, advice that you might have how to get them to transition a little bit more to like a healthier lifestyle or strength training or anything like that? Well, I think a big part of it and something I stress with my clients is you have to find a way to make it fun. Mm-hmm. If they just look at coming to the gym or, or lifting as another chore, you know, just something else they have to check off their to-do list, they're going to hate it. They're going to dread doing it. They're not going to look forward to it. And more than likely, they're not going to be consistent. Mm-hmm. So I tell people to try, for one, to set goals that get them motivated and excited. And, you know, for different people, that can mean different things. Some people may want to try to deadlift twice their body weight or mm-hmm be able to perform their first body weight chin up or learn how to do kettlebell exercises, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. I stress them to try to make it fun and slightly competitive, you know, compete with themselves Mm -hmm. to improve their performance. And um, even with cardio a lot lately, people think they have to get on a treadmill or a machine for hours at a time. And I try to encourage people, you know, hey, you can get that type of physical activity without doing structured cardio, you know, involved in a recreational activity, go play some basketball or ultimate frisbee or racquetball or go skiing or hiking or whatever, 
and trying to get them to realize that they can be physically active to where it helps them achieve their physique and their health goals without actually exercising towards something fun. So yeah. instead of looking at it like it's it's like a unnecessary evil, like it's like this drudgery. You know, I I hate, I hate doing this, but I, I kind of have to do it because I want to look a certain way. Try and incorporate it into a lifestyle that makes it fun and engaging, and that's what I've said a long time. Is you got to find that consistency, and if you don't enjoy it, you're not having fun. There's no way you're going to incorporate it into a lifestyle. It's just always going to be like this thing that you hate doing, and then that's going to build up like this internal stress. You know, it's like you always look. You know, you should be looking forward to it, not saying, "Oh man, I, I have to go do this after work" or something like that. So that's really good. I really. Uh, I, I love that philosophy. So let's go back to uh, your girls going girls going strong. You have a awesome group of people that you're associated with. Tell me a little bit about that. Well, actually, we all kind of came together on a whim a few years ago. Julia Laduski was competing in a powerlifting competition near Cincinnati, Com Covington, Kentucky. Mm -hmm. And on a whim, we all just kind of said, "Hey, let's meet up," because a lot of us lived in Kentucky at a time, and so we all just kind of got together. Many of us meeting in person for the first time and it just was an instant incredible connection between all of us and that's really what snowballed and kick-started everything and, and got us to where we are today cool now who are some of the other girls you've got julia leduski um you you got nicole funani fununi mm -hmm. yeah Funny. and she's uh rkc and i've seen her do some incredible things i'm talking snatching big kettlebells heavy get-ups you know all kinds of really cool stuff that you know, they're starting to get a little bit more popular now, but, you know, still I think you guys are battling, you know, uh, that, that like, traditional cardio thing and, you know, that, that – I don't, I don't want to say it's negative. But as long as people are doing something, it's better than nothing. But I think what you guys are doing is really, you know, emphasizing girls going strong. It, it really makes a huge statement. So that's – that's something phenomenal there. Now, I wanted to talk something about, about your, uh, your accomplishments. What achievements or accomplishments have you had in, like, the, the strength and fitness industry? Um, as far as, you, have you done any, uh, like, powerlifting meets or anything like that, individual achievements that you might have had? Actually, back in 2009, kind of on a whim, I was going to the University of Louisville at the time, and there was a Southern, Southern Powerlifting Federation meet right in my area. And I was like, well, man, I'll get in there and just try it. Uh -huh. And I never done one. I didn't know anything about them. And I ended up doing a push pull, but I set the record for my division. At that point, I was, I weighed in at about 120 pounds and I bench pressed 145 and deadlifted 300. That was the first time I'd ever pulled 300 pounds was in a competition. So that was pretty That's fun. Awesome. It was exciting. And what record was that? Na state, national, world, what? It was their world world record for that division in the push pull. At a, at about 120 pounds, you benched over by 145 and pulled 300 off the ground. It's pretty amazing. Congratulations. Yeah, I think I should have got the record for the slowest bench press. If you see that video, it is like the slowest bench press ever. I swear it takes probably 10 seconds to come up. <laughs> Longest 10 seconds of your it. life. Longest 10 seconds ever. But hey, a grinder, you know, you, you got it up, you got it done. Good job. Um, Definitely. So what is some of the, like, what's the philosophy behind your training? You're, you're at a point now, um, you know, you're with Girls Going Strong, and uh, you've got different programs. Your website is at Beautiful Badass. And now you've well, got my website, so it's, it's neashanks.com. Neashanks. So Beautiful what's, what's Beautiful Badass all about? Beautiful Badass, well, it's actually kind of, it's a product, but it's also kind of a state of mind or a status that people can have. It's just about being proud of who you are, not trying to be somebody else, not trying to look like somebody somebody else. It's about becoming the best you you can and doing that through whatever strength training means you prefer. If it's heavy barbell lifts or body weight training or whatever, it's more of an attitude that I like to tell people. And you can go about that in just any number of ways, basically what suits your personality. Right on. And that attitude feeds into your philosophy. They kind of like feed each other. So tell me a little bit about your training philosophy and why you train the way you do now. Well, I've been training a little different the past couple of months. About a year ago, I got a little too impatient with my training and a little too greedy and ended up hurting myself. For complete, It was completely avoidable. I was just, I'm stubborn and pig-headed, so I hurt myself. So the past few uh, months, I've been trying to get over that injury, and thankfully I have. And here lately, I've been trying to set new goals that keep me motivated and excited. So that, that's included a lot of actually body weight training lately. Uh, one of my most recent goals, I really want to do handstand push-ups, and I finally got those for the first time a couple of weeks ago, so I've been hitting those really hard. Cool. Um, just trying to experiment with new things and, 
and try to keep that enthusiasm up for training. Because, you know, even though I love it and it's been a part of my life for so long, there comes times where I get kind of bored and I just want to do something different. But, you know, as long as I know I have a balanced program, you know, including the important movements, you know, some type of squat, some type of deadlift, and then the pushes and pulls, as long as I know things are balanced and I know how to do that now, you know, without a written program since I've been doing it for so long, as long as I know I keep things balanced, I'm trying to right now more than anything just kind of have fun. Because mm-hmm. I've just been in a little bit of a rut, so oh, right. still training hard, but having fun, and it's not a structured; it's more kind of auto regulation. If you want to give it a title, right on. Now that's that's definitely a big uh, a big key. Is you know you learn from your mistakes, and all of us get a little impatient. We're like, oh, I saw all these results, you know, my first couple months, and it kind of slowed down a little bit. It's just the nature of the beast. But then we want to like speed things up, and uh, usually. <laughs> There's no warning. Like you're going good and all of a sudden, blam, there goes something. Either your hip or your knee or, you know, something just goes. So that's something very important. Stick to the plan and uh, don't let yourself get too carried away and try to avoid those injuries. Cool, man. So, yeah, that's, that's awesome stuff. Now, what coaches have influenced you over the over the years? Like uh, who, who's helped you kind of gain, you know, coaches or other athletes or just people in your life might have influenced, you know, what, what you're doing now? Man, I'm going to preface this right now and say I'm going to leave some people out, and I'm going to feel so bad about that. So if I forget to say, yeah. hey, please, God, don't come attack me. Well, I mean, there's been just yeah, a you're ton not, of, you're not going to get uh, everybody. Like, Tony sure. Dinocore, I learned, I started reading his, when he was back on the Boston Herald website or whatever, years ago, following who, him, Mike who Robertson. Was that? I'm sorry, I missed it. Who was that? Who was that? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I missed it. Um, Tony Dinocore, okay. Eric Chrissy, Mike Robertson, uh, Brooks Kubik, I learned a lot from him with his books. Um, Dinosaur training is definitely a must read by anyone yeah. who likes to hit the iron. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I've got a couple of his books. Excellent mm-hmm. stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, man, I'm blanking out. I mean, all types of the, you know, oh, man, I'm blanking out right now. But <laughs> <laughs> no, that's There's, just the way it is. It's, uh, it's over the years, I think, you know, you, you get involved with uh, whether it's powerlifting or, you know, you get involved with your sport and then you, you learn so much from different coaches. You know, you said you played basketball. Growing up, yeah, that was my main sport when I was a little kid up until I got I got in a car wreck when I was 13 and broke a growth plate in my ankle. So that kind of ended that for a while. Just never got back into it. I think down where you're at, you're in Kentucky. I don't know how long you've been there. So who's the uh, the – Tennessee coach Pat Summit, I think. Pat Summit. Yeah, so, I'm from I mean, Tennessee, so you know. <laughs> yeah, like that's it's yeah, it might be a little bit of a you know fight for you, but it's there's definitely a lot of people out there that are putting out amazing information, and whether it's male or female, there's uh, there's there's tons to learn from. Um, so, tell me a little bit about how, like you say, you're going through some changes now. You're you're really involved with body weight training, which is extremely popular and for good reason. But how has your training evolved um, from 10 years ago, five years ago to what you're doing now? What have been some of the things that have sparked, you know, changes for you? Um, A lot of it was just reaching certain milestones. You know, I'd set a goal and, you know, which the one goal I haven't reached yet, which is how I hurt myself. I was trying to hurry and get that triple body weight deadlift. I wanted that so bad. And like I said, I got greedy, and that's how I hurt myself, but I'll come back to that one later. But, uh, you know, I've just been setting milestones, and a lot of them included just really heavy lifting. Uh, finally got a one-and-a-half body weight back squat recently, and then after I got that, I was kind of burned out on it. Mm-hmm. And, you know, most of my past, especially the past five years, has been primarily towards just pure strength, just, mm-hmm. you know, how much overhead press, how much can I bench, how much can I squat, how much can I deadlift. Mm-hmm. And the past couple months has been more just um, – I've gotten away from some of the traditional barbell stuff. Like I said, I've been doing more body weight, tons of chin-ups, handstands, mm-hmm. advanced push-ups, um, inverted rows, you know, and also trying to do single leg squats. And But I'm still doing, like, you know, back squats and deadlifts and stuff, just not as heavy uh-huh. as I used to do. So I'm kind of taking a different track of giving my body a break from comp. Because I was, you know, as a coach, I know what I'm supposed to do, but I don't always listen to my own advice. You know, I like to right. just push hard, hard mm-hmm. and sometimes that leads to burnout, so... Well, that's, that's one of the things. We're our own biggest critics, so sometimes we want to push so damn hard that it's uh, sometimes it's to our detriment. But something that I've noticed for you, it's it doesn't seem that you're ever really like trying to train to look a certain way, but it's more performance based. So, what what are some like like you brought up? You know, you want to squ- you wanted to at a, there was a time you wanted to squat a certain amount of weight or or deadlift a certain amount of weight. But what is it that you think? 
would inspire some of these other people. Like you get these women, they're like, I just, I just want to lose a little bit right here. You see, it's a little jiggly. I just, <laughs> I just want to lose some of that. You know, how can you get them from getting that kind of philosophy or or ideology in their head? You're not just going to lose like fat right here off your arm. You've got to train your body. So what are some of the things uh, with these people that you've met, your clients and the people that you've worked with over the years to get them to be a little bit more performance based and not just think about losing, you know, a spare tire or, you know, how to, or just fitting in a dress. Well, actually years ago, and I should have mentioned this, and I wrote, I've written about it on my website a few times. I went through a period where I had just disordered eating and, uh, kind of put on a lot of excess fat and just went through a hard time with obsessing about food and binging and couldn't get anything under control. And all of my workouts, that's all I actually trained for at the time was, you know, I just, I wanted to look better. I wanted to lose fat. I wanted this to be more defined. I didn't want this to look mm-hmm. like that. So actually for, you know, years, I went through a period where all my workouts were driven by just trying to burn calories and just trying to look better. Mm-hmm. Well, when I finally started to change things, because I was just so deep in a hole and I knew I had to get out of those disordered eating patterns and, and all that, that's when I started to say, you know, hey, what do I need to do? I know I need to do something different. I can't keep doing the same thing or I'll have the same crap going on. Mm-hmm. And I was like, you know what? I need to go back to when I originally started training. You know, when I first started lifting when I was younger, it was just to improve my performance to get better. And I, was, I made myself go back to that mentality. So I made myself, whenever I'd go to the gym, focus on doing a little better than last time. Don't worry about how long the workout takes. Don't worry about trying to be exhausted at the end of it. Just do better than last time, whether that's adding more weight to the bar, doing an extra rep, whatever. Mm-hmm. And so it's that kind of experience that I've carried over with all my clients, especially since that period, just really saying, look, I know you want to lose fat. I know you want to look better in a bikini, whatever. You want to look better in a dress. But I'm stressing them. I just, you know, they're, they're paying me, so usually they listen, you know. Mm-hmm. Say, what we're going to do, we're going to focus on your performance. Let's set some goals that get you excited, that get you motivated to come back to the gym. Mm-hmm. And all you focus on every workout is just doing a little better and getting closer to those goals. Mm-hmm. And then once they start, you know, especially with women, if they haven't seriously lifted before, mm-hmm. after a couple weeks I notice that they just get so excited once they're able to do, like, push-ups or chin-ups, things they didn't know they could do. Mm-hmm. That motivation just kind of builds on itself and snowballs to where that's all they think about. And they come to the gym like, man, let's do this. I'm ready. I'm going to kill this today. Right, exactly. Just focusing on that performance to where fat loss and looking better, it just it becomes a side effect at that point. Mm-hmm. So usually it takes a little trust on their end at first. Yep. But usually once they start doing that, they get addicted to it, and mm-hmm. it's pretty easy after, after that initial period. Yeah, I think I think we get a lot of resistance from people right off the bat. You know, it's um, these crazy myths. You know, they think as soon as they touch any kind of weight, they're going to get big and bulky. Like they're just going to wake up in the morning, and then their arms are going to be all swolled up. Like it just doesn't happen like that. So we we're constantly fighting this battle. But I think the the bigger issue is the fact that they're just finding like excuses to not do things that might be hard or that they might not be good at. Most people can't go to a trainer and just start banging out pull ups right away. It's something that's it's hard to do. And just getting that first pull up is a is a milestone for most people. So now they start getting closer and closer to these things and uh and they see, you know, the things that you're doing and what your friends are doing. They see heavy kettlebell presses, they see handstand push ups, and then they st- kind of want to start emulating that because they say, oh, man, well, they're if they're, you know, swinging at, you know, 24 kilo bell around or something and they're not, you know, massive chicks, you know, it's obviously not going to do that to me. So I, I think that's, you know, incredible what you guys are doing, great role models. So tell me real quick about some of the things that, whether it be trends or anything that you see in the fitness industry right now that you really like that's that's going on. Like I really like the fact that you guys are putting together, you know, this strong movement, you know, for women and everything. What are some things that that you think are extremely exciting that are that get you fired up right now? Well, I think one of the trends like you mentioned is a lot of these women seeing that they can challenge themselves physically, whether it's with barbells or or, you know, put flipping tires or pulling heavy sleds or running hill sprints, Mm -hmm. it seems to be that a lot of these women are actually starting to be more open to doing those sorts of things because of, you know, there's a lot of different movements out there like Girls Gone Strong or even, you know, things like CrossFit have shown that you can lift weights or or do something more than just jogging five miles and actually look awesome and enjoy it. So it's, it's just seeing more women being open to this concept of being of strength training in whatever form, whatever tools you want to use, body weight, kettlebells, what have you. 
it's just cool to see them actually get excited about it and diving into it and kind of saying, okay, you know, I don't need to spend all my time on the elliptical machine and, mm-hmm. and be more to those new challenges. So that part's absolutely awesome. Right, and that kind of feeds into my, what are some things that you hate? Obviously, you know, you've, you've brought up a couple times, and because that's what a lot of people think, especially beginners, I think, oh, to get in shape, I just got to get on the treadmill or the elliptical and just go for like 45 minutes. There might be some merit merit to that for some people, but uh, it's just not my cup of tea. I'd rather watch a chicken roast for an hour than, you know, sit on the elliptical and spin my wheels like a hamster. It's just not my bag. But what are some things that, that you just hate right now, anything that you think is probably more detrimental than, than helpful? Well, one of the things I think is super frustrating is uh, a lot of women, they still hear this old mentality that, hey, you know, don't lift anything heavier than a five-pound weight, just do lots of cardio, eat really low calories, you know, it frustrates me that they still, you know, they'll come to me and be like, what do you think about this? I'm like, you know, here, here's what I've experienced here are my clients and all these people that are doing this, and here are the results they get. The results you want, this is what we're doing to get them. Mm-hmm. But they're still too leery because of what they've heard for years and years and years and what they still read in some magazines and even online. Mm-hmm. They don't quite jump into that yet. So they, they're in the same rut. They're in, they don't get results. And it's frustrating because I'm like, you know, you asked me, I'm telling you, here's what you do. Right. You like how I look. You like how my clients look. Here's how we got to look this way, but mm-hmm. they still don't, you know, they still don't try it. So that part's frustrating, but yeah, you know, you can't make anybody do anything. So right, right, old habits are hard to break. So it's, uh, I think the hardest part is just getting them to buy in to what they're doing. So keep doing what you're doing, and uh, people are loving it. So um, yeah, let's talk. I'm gonna have one more thing to that actually. <laughs> There's one more thing that's kind of frustrating me is people thinking they. They have to constantly make themselves – Brad Pelon has the best quote, but I don't want to say it because I don't want to misquote him. It's, it's essentially something like uh, he's tired of this – people thinking obsession is health and fatigue is a virtue. And basically that mentality that if you're not constantly punishing yourself with nutrition or training, that you're not dedicated or you're not doing it right. Mm-hmm. I, I, I want people to realize that you know you don't have to revolve your life around how you eat. You don't have to revolve your life around working out. It's actually pretty simple. Mm-hmm. And if you do it right and keep it simple, it's not going to take up much of your time. Uh-huh. And that just seems to baffle people. Right. But that, that's something else that's kind of bothers you know kind of bothers me. These people are like, oh, you only train three days a week. You're not hardcore. I'm like, dude, I get the results I want. Why do you, why do you care? Yeah, it's it's yeah. Uh, you're right. What you say is uh, the minimal effective dose, right? There's a lot of people that talk about that, and not everyone buys into it. It's 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 this whole maximal approach instead of optimal. It's like, how much can I do? How many reps can I do in 20 minutes? You know, how much can I squeeze into my day as opposed to training a little bit smarter and focus on recovery, focus on quality nutrition, but not being overly obsessed about it? You're, those obsessive behaviors aren't making you more healthy. It's just actually probably creating even more stress in your life and 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 your uh and your environment than than it needs to be. So yeah, it's it's about trying to find that optimal, doing as much that you need to do to create positive results, but not so much that you're actually going up the hill and back down the other side because you're actually beating yourself up much much more than necessary. So I really like that minimal effective dose as opposed to just see how badly you can hurt yourself because you're hardcore. Everyone wants to be hardcore now. Everyone wants to flip a tire or something like that. I don't know, which is great, but at the same time. Um, yeah, try and find that happy balance for, you know, health first, and then you'll start pursuing your strength and, uh, and, and getting better as opposed to just trying to kill yourself for instant results. And one of the reasons why you got hurt because you wanted to, uh, go too far too fast, maybe. Right? Yeah. I've, I've done it. Most, <laughs> most of us have done it. But, you know, lesson learned. Um, so you got into the cardio bit. Um, let's talk about, uh, lift like a girl real quick. Tell us again, um, why why this is important and why it's important to you, you know, and, and you you felt inspired and motivated to put this program out there. Well, basically, it's just kind of a combination of my years of training and my years of personal experience with disordered eating or training just to, you know, burn calories or whatever. And it's something I just put together from, like I said, working with clients who have gone through the same thing. And, and I try to just pour everything I could it's called lift like a girl, but it's basically three components. There's lift like a girl where I go over strength training. I try to show people, give them control to, to, to design their own workouts based on their experience level, the training equipment they have available to them, whether they can only train at home with body weight or a gym that has everything they want. 
um, their preferences, you know, what they prefer to do and any limitations they may have. So it's me trying to tell them everything I can to give them control. And I give some workout templates where they can just plug things in that that's going to work for them and, and just explain to them the importance of things like de- deloading and sets, reps, volume and, and a balance program, all that stuff. So it's just trying to give them control so they can tailor it to their lifestyle, you know, all that stuff. And then um, there's Eat Like a Girl, where I discuss nutrition principles that I call simple and stress-free and showing people how to adopt eating patterns and eating habits that work for them. It's not saying you have to eat five to six small meals a day. And at the same time, it's not saying you have to do what's really popular now, intermittent fasting. It's more of giving them some flexible principles. And then beyond that, I explain to them how they can, you know, do what works for them. Just because somebody says you have to do this or just because this is popular, it doesn't mean you have to do it. As long as you follow the basic guidelines, the rest is completely up to you. Right. So, again, it's trying to keep things simple and as stress-free as possible. And the final component is what I call think like a girl. And I just kind of call that fun mental strength training. And it's just more the mental aspect, which has, in my opinion, been really neglected when it comes to strength training or personal training women. Um, so we go over things like, you know, stressing about achieving perfection and how the weight, weight scale can play mind games on you and just things of that nature. So it's really those three main components. And I just try to put everything in. I mean, it ends up being over two and a half hours worth of video content. It's in five separate videos. But like I said, I just really wanted to pour everything into it so people can have this information and take control and hopefully, I mean, it's a lot of information, but I try to stress and show people how to make things as simple as possible. Mm -hmm. And that's the whole point. Keep it simple, get the results you want, and then move on. I I really like how you've you've stressed how things, you have principles that work for basically, you know, everybody, but things are going to change. So they have... They don't have to like think for themselves because it's laid out for them, but yet they're going to put things into their own lifestyle. And they're going to revolve their training around their lifestyle, not their lifestyle exactly. around the training. So that's that's a beautiful thing. It gets people to gear, you know, and, and get motivated to, to work it into what they're already doing and enhance themselves as opposed to changing everything they're already doing to try and do this new thing. Because I, I found that that, does, that approach doesn't work as well. You know, it's that's one of the things like... Uh, January 1st, everyone makes a resolution and their whole lifestyle is here and now we're going to just change gears and everything and now I'm going to live this way. And it never, it never lasts because they're just, they don't want to live that way. So this is a way to uh, make small adjustments, gradually make progress and be consistent with everything. And you take a full body, mind and spirit approach so they're getting stronger from the inside out and uh, it's really amazing. Well, it's hard to, What's Go that? Ahead. I say because it's really hard to give people some kind of cookie cutter approach because I can't tell somebody, hey, you're going to go to the gym four days a week Mm -hmm. if that's really impractical for them. If they know it's going to be a struggle, you know, well, three days a week is better for them. I say you can only get to the gym three days a week or that's all you want to get to the gym. Here's what you do. And just like with nutrition, I mean, yeah, I wish there was one thing that worked for everybody because it would be so much simpler. But the truth is everybody is different. And when you try to force people to do something that they don't like or that doesn't work for their personality or lifestyle – well, then they usually just end up frustrated and quit. And, you know, I want to help people succeed. That is my main goal, to help them simplify things, get their life back, and not constantly be stressing over food or training and just, you know, making it fit into their life and not forcing it the other way around. Right on. Simple and effective. That's how people get shit done. All right. I don't want to take up too much of your time. It was amazing talking to you. You're a winner. You're a total leader. And we need you. So thank you. Tell people real quick how they can get a hold of you and how they can grab their copy of uh, Lift Like a Girl. Uh, if they want to, they can go to liftlikeagirlguide.com or go to my website at neashanks.com. Either one will get you there. I'll put links uh, when I put this video up. So thank you so much. And I uh, hope to talk to you soon, Nia. Thank you very much. All right. Have a good one. Thank you.